Hi there, this is Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and this is another video where I'm going to show you how I made a page in my latest altered book. So let's go. Now let's have a look at another altered book layout. This is almost finished, this vintage book that I've altered. All of the elements are glued down, but I still have to embellish the pages to really make them pop and special and works of art. On this page, these woodpeckers are an original engraving from a, a nature book, 1845. This is... Uh -uh. Today I'm going to show you another way to make your altered book pages really pop. This is a, an altered vintage book that I, well I'm getting there, all of the images are in place, but now I want to do the magic part that makes them really pop and turns the pages into a work of art. This page has, these woodpeckers are from an engraving in a nature book from 1845. It was in terrible shape, this book. And this print was also actually in pretty poor shape all around the edges. It was ripped. It, it had some centuries old smudgy things. So I, I rescued it. I cut these guys out and now I'm going to turn them into something else. This little piece here with the flower is a fragment from a book of a girl's magazine from 1903. This is the original text of the book that I'm using. And this is from a vintage butterfly field guide. Now what I've done here is I've added some pockets. That's added by gluing some of the pages of the book to each other. And then I've also turned these butterflies, I've just glued down the edges so that we can add these cigarette cards. This is an oversized cigarette card. But before I add these permanently, I'm going to show you how to make the page pop. I'm going to go around every element in this page with a water-soluble graphite pencil. This one's by Karen Dash. I use it a lot. And then I'll come back and show you how to activate it. Now I've gone around all of the edges with the water-soluble pencil. Now I'm going to show you how to use gesso to activate the pencil. You can, of course, use water. You could use a gel medium. I'm going to show you how to use gesso to make borders that are actually kind of haunted looking, very pretty, and actually very painterly. I am not going to talk too much because I kind of have to feel what I'm doing. So join me, won't you?
Okay. I like this, but I think that this could use a little bit more color. So I'm going to use this purple. This is a soft chalk pastel. And I'm just going to add it in a few spots. And I'm also going to activate this with some gesso. So you can see that when you add the gesso to the chalk pastel, you can paint with it. I'm also adding a little bit of a water-soluble crayon here. This is also Caran d'Ache. Actually, going to use a cloth to pull up a little bit of the gesso that's gone too close to the butterfly. And I am going to keep working on this, but you get the idea. Then I'll come back and show you the finished page. Okay, it is getting there. I want to show you a couple of uh, more techniques. I want to bring out even more of this plummy color of the purple. So again, I'm going to take this uh, dark plum colored chalk pastel. And I'm going to add to the border of the pocket. I'm not going to activate this one. I am just going to smudge like this. Okay, that gives a little bit of definition to that. And I'm just going to drag it across. Not the whole way. I don't want it to look all perfect and stuff so I'm just gonna let it drag across and then fade fade away a little bit I have added a little bit of an orange color because I also wanted to pick up on the orange in the wings here now I want to do the same here for a little bit of balance and contrast this is a stencil I use a lot and I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, dappling here. So I've taken uh, another soft pastel that's kind of an orange color. Not a, it's a subdued orange. Now I'm going to take a mister that has a little bit of water in it. And I'm very lightly going to mist. So that underneath the page will be damp. Now, I'm going to scribble into the stencil with the pastel 
and holding it really carefully, I'm going to smudge that pastel into the holes here, into the stencil. So now we just have a little bit of dappling. It's actually got a little bit of a 3D effect to it. I'm going to add a little, a little bit here, not too much because, um, when I add the paper ephemera, the, this chalk pastel technique with the stencil works really well and you can fix it. But if you put it with something like with a card is going to be coming in and out and in and out, it, it might knock some of that off, but we'll just add it there for a little bit of oomph. Okay. 